One of the toughest things to convince staff of today is that they need to have their passwords be secure and that they need to change them on a regular basis. Oftentimes, individuals will push back whenever you change the password complexity requirements within an organization or any time you really start to change how they're going to do their day-to-day job. So one of the things that you need to know how to do as an IT professional and to sort of do some preemptive troubleshooting from an IT perspective or an IT security perspective is know how to set password complexity rules. So I'm on a Windows server right now and I'm connected into the group policy management utility. And here within the default domain policy is often where you're going to see the password policy set. So this is a standard default domain policy that has not been edited from the Windows default. So Windows default default domain policy, which means this is what it's going to enforce by default within a Windows domain, ensures that passwords are seven characters in length and they must meet complexity requirements. So anything that isn't seven characters in length isn't going to work. It's going to enforce logon restrictions. So if you set logon restrictions within your user accounts, it's going to make sure that that user is enforced so that they cannot log in outside of those hours. It's going to make sure that there's no storage of the land manager hash value. And what that does is when the user changes their password from the default password the first time they log in, that hash value is not stored on the local machine. Prior to this, you used to be able to go in and just grab that hash value off of a Windows machine, and you could crack it very easily using a rainbow table in a matter of minutes. So so this creates complexity, and this makes it much harder for a hacker to gain access to a system, or once they gain access to a system, to pull out the different hash values for different users. Now, I want to go in and I want to edit the default domain policy because this one is rather insecure. There are some things I typically like to go in here and change. So this is what the group policy management editor looks like. So to access this, I would go in the group policy management and I would find the default domain policy. I'd right click and select edit. And that's going to open up this window that I have open now that's going to show you the default domain policy and allow you to create settings within it. So I want to go into the password policy itself and I want to change the minimum password length because seven characters is not enough today. Typically the recommended password length today is between eight and 12 characters. I have seen some places that enforce higher password requirements on users. I typically recommend 12 characters. And additionally, I like to go in and take a look at the password complexity requirements. So here we're required to have an English uppercase and lowercase character, a base character, and a non-alphanumeric character. The complexity requirements are enforced. So if they don't have this within their account, it's not going to work. Now, some organizations I've gone into have disabled the complexity requirements, and this is because users don't like the password complexity requirements. They don't like having to remember passwords all the time, and it really becomes an organizational issue. The the challenge you have oftentimes with this is convincing users that it is a good idea to have a complex password that changes all the time. If I tell users that they need to have a password that's at least eight characters and that they have that password with an uppercase, a lowercase letter, some numbers, and it has to change every 30 days or every three months, for example, oftentimes what you end up getting are passwords that look like this. So summer 2019 exclamation mark. Summer 2020 exclamation mark. Winter 2019 exclamation mark and and these passwords are are set up by users because they're easy to remember Uh, when we're discussing password policy with users and we're really bringing them in and trying to train them on why they need to do this it's important for them to understand that the reason they're doing this is because while their password at work may be secure if they've used that password elsewhere on the internet for other accounts somewhere or even a variant of that password, chances are someone out there 
is going to be able to see that password at some point. And if they can attribute it to an individual, they can likely attribute that individual to an organization and an account within that organization. So it creates some problems for organizations because we're all human beings and we do have a limited number of passwords that we really want to remember. And unfortunately today, every website requires that you have a password set up on it. It, it seems that these accounts that you have seem to be more and more, they just sort of grow over time. So what you need to really hit home with users is that by reusing passwords that they've used for the past three months, they are creating a possible or potential issue for the organization. And by reusing passwords and simply changing a number at the end by one, that does not actually make that password any more secure. And that is often what happens when you enforce password complexity requirements. A user might start off with the password of password 01 exclamation mark. Their next password will be password 02 exclamation mark. So this isn't really secure. It's rather easy to build a possible dictionary file based upon a user's information that you were able to find on the dark web or on a pastebin account. So you want to make sure that users understand that they need to change this frequently. I like to tell users to use passphrases. So instead of using one word followed by a number and then an exclamation mark, I like them to follow some type of complexity or some type of template. So with a passphrase, you would use more than one word. So for example, you might use I love chicken zero one exclamation mark. And that's a little bit more secure. But even that in itself tends to follow that same pattern of having the number at the end followed by an exclamation mark or a dollar sign, which are the two most commonly used special characters. So you may ask them to put the number at the start. So they could say zero one, I love chicken, and then an exclamation mark at the end. And that's just a little bit more secure. Or they could put the exclamation mark in the middle. And that's even more secure because it makes it a lot more difficult for a hacker to go and crack that hash value if they are able to somehow capture it. And it also makes it a lot more difficult for them to potentially log into that user's account or guess their password. The real issue comes from how complex you make this, because the more difficult you make this on an end user, the more likely it is that they're going to find a way to circumvent that password policy or make it easier on themselves. So you want to make sure that the password policy is complex, but not complex to the point where the user has to write down their password and keep it under their keyboard, for example. Make sure they're using passphrases instead of passwords. They have numbers, they have special characters, uppercase, lowercase letters. You can even push users to start using two-factor authentication for more important or more integral applications that your organization is using. And oftentimes, I will recommend that organizations stick with the password complexity requirements they have because users are used to it and simply go to two-factor authentication or even three-factor authentication for more secure applications.